They've burned him, boiled him, frozen him, crushed him, starved him, irradiated him, and even shot him into space. No matter what they do, he keeps on living, and he could be absolutely anywhere. Sounds scary, right? Lucky for us, he's harmless and totally adorable to boot. Just look at those chubby cheeks. Welcome to Salt Pepper Wisdom. Whether we're delving into the mysteries of the cosmos, uncovering the remarkable abilities of animals, or unraveling the secrets of ancient civilizations, we guarantee you'll be entertained and enlightened. Today, we're taking a look at one of Earth's hardiest and cutest creatures. Meet the tardigrade. He's a nearly microscopic invertebrate with eight legs and a pudgy segmented body. That body is made up of around 1,000 cells. For reference, your body contains about 30 trillion human cells, not counting your microbiome. The tardigrade has a nervous system and a digestive system, but no respiratory or circulatory systems. The way he waddles his round, jelly-like body on those little paws earned him the name Water Bear. His walk also inspired his proper name, Tardigrada, or Slow Stepper, coined by Italian biologist Lazzaro Spallanzani in the 1770s. You can usually find this little guy chilling on moss or lichen in a wet environment. That's where he gets his other nickname, the moss piglet. Currently, there are around 1,300 known species of tardigrades, but their cute appearance isn't their only claim to fame. Turns out, tardigrades are practically indestructible. Tardigrades have been found living in some of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. We found them in hot springs, on the mountaintops of the Himalayas, deep in the oceans, at the Earth's poles and at the equator. Of course, not all tardigrades live in extreme conditions. They can also be found in lakes and ponds, or even on stone walls. They prefer to live in a moist environment, but as long as they can store some moisture in their bodies, they can go pretty much anywhere. Tardigrades also keep their fluids up by feeding on other organisms. Usually, they go for algae or plant cells, but bacteria, tiny animals, and even other tardigrades can end up on the menu. If they can get fluids and cellular contents from it, they can feed on it. So, what's their secret? Tardigrades are one of the few animals we've observed that can suspend their metabolism using a process called cryptobiosis. This process can be triggered by a few environmental factors. A temperature drop resulting in freezing, an excess of salt, a lack of oxygen, or most commonly, desiccation. That means an extreme lack of water. When tardigrades need to go into survival mode, they expel almost all moisture from their little bodies and curl up into a dry ball called a ton. As a ton, the tardigrade's metabolism slows to as low as 0.01% of normal. To the observer, it would absolutely seem to be dead. When environmental conditions become more comfortable and enough water is available, the ton-state tardigrades can rehydrate and resume their exciting little lives as if nothing happened. Tardigrades can remain in the tun state for years. In 2016, scientists rehydrated tons from a moss sample collected from Antarctica in 1983. Those tardigrades not only survived being frozen for 30 years, they were still able to reproduce. That explains surviving harsh conditions. But what about other kinds of danger? If a ton is practically dead and can't react, how can it protect itself? This part is pretty cool. While we've seen other organisms like brine shrimp and nematodes use cryobiosis, the tardigrades have something unique. They have water-soluble proteins called tardigrade disordered proteins, or TDP for short. When there's no water in the tardigrade's body, the TDP molecules harden to form a glass-like cocoon around its cells to protect them from harm. They have another protein called DSUP, short for damage suppressor, that further protects the cells from radiation. So a ton isn't just a low-energy ball of water bear, it's a tough one. The combination of cryptobiosis, TDP and DSUP 
is what allows tardigrades to survive extreme heat, cold, pressure and radiation. At least until conditions improve enough for them to reanimate. Because tardigrades aren't adapted to live in these conditions, they're not truly what scientists call extremophiles. Before we get into all the crazy stuff scientists have tried with tardigrades, we at Salt Pepper Wisdom want to say thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit the like button and subscribe for more frequent fun facts. After seeing the extreme conditions tardigrades can survive in the wild, scientists started putting them to the test. Several tests, in fact. But if you're not in the mood to hear about animal experimentation, you may want to close your ears for a bit. Tardigrades have been known to survive temperatures ranging from minus 200 degrees Celsius to as high as 151 degrees. But scientists have found that tardigrades do have some limits. A study published in 2020 found that active tardigrades of the species Ramazotius varionatus could survive after spending 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius, but not all of them made it. They did find, however, that the survival chances increased when the specimens were gradually acclimated to warmer and warmer temperatures. For the tons, they really turned up the heat. They exposed two groups of tons to a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, one for one hour and the other for 24 hours. Two days later, after cooling off and rehydrating, 94% of the short exposure group were alive and kicking. Unfortunately, 0% of the long exposure group survived. Oops. What else have we done with tardigrades lately? Well, we fired them out of a gun. A science gun. Scientists use a tool called a two-stage light gas gun to achieve higher muzzle velocities than are possible with conventional guns. According to a study published in 2021, researchers fed the tardigrades moss and mineral water before freezing them for 48 hours to put them in a ton state. Hollow nylon bullets containing two or three tardigrades each were fired from the two-stage light gas gun at varying speeds at a sand target inside a vacuum chamber. The tardigrades survived impacts close to 900 meters per second, as well as a momentary shock pressure up to 1.14 gigapascals. Any more than that, well, as study leader Alejandra Traspas says, they just mush. The idea for the gun study came from a popular idea called panspermia, that suggests life on Earth could have originated from microorganisms carried by a meteor or other space object that struck the Earth. Tardigrades are basically the toughest critters we know of. So if they could survive such an impact, maybe other organisms could as well. Unfortunately for panspermia fans, this study says it's pretty unlikely they could have made it to Earth in one piece. But that's just Earth. Impacts between other objects in other parts of space might be less catastrophic for our friends, the water bears. In April 2019, an Israeli satellite crashed into the surface of Earth's moon carrying a bunch of tardigrades. It wasn't a comfy ride either. The tardigrades rode on the outside of the satellite and presumably scattered on impact. The scientists behind that project think there's a good chance that the tardigrades survive. If we ever find them up there, we'll bring them back to Earth and see if they recover from that crazy space ride. However, we do know that tardigrades can survive the vacuum of space. In 2007, European researchers sent 3,000 tardigrades into orbit for 12 days on the outside of a rocket. 68% of those water bears survived. In 2021, they finally got to fly first class. A SpaceX Dragon cargo spacecraft delivered tardigrades to the International Space Station for an experiment called Cell Science 04. The aim of this project is to identify the genes that help tardigrades to survive and adapt in high-stress environments. Scientists will study which genes activate or deactivate during their journey, as well as the gene activity of this group's offspring. This information could help us develop new ways to protect humans during space travel, especially for missions of longer duration. We might also learn new ways to preserve the food and medicine those astronauts would need to take with them. Tardigrades have been here long before us and will likely be around after humanity is gone. The fossil record shows that tardigrades have been around for 500 million years, which means they've survived the planet's last five mass extinction events. Think they can keep that winning streak going? 
The 2017 paper gave thought to how life would fare against astrophysical events such as supernovae, large asteroid impacts and gamma-ray bursts. Most of the scenarios considered would involve the destruction of parts of the atmosphere and Earth receiving a huge radiation bath. That would kill off most of us land dwellers. But organisms living deep in the ocean or underground might be able to survive. The most obvious route to a tardigrade apocalypse would be the boiling of Earth's oceans. Something really big would need to happen really close to the planet and completely wreck the water bear's chances of, well, finding any stable source of water. But hey, it's not all gloom and doom. Humanity is pretty resilient too. And with some luck and hard work, the tardigrades can help us reach new heights. And this guy? He's not worried about the end of the world. This water bear is just chilling, living his best moss piglet life, getting comfortable in any environment life throws his way. From space travel to medicine to just understanding how life flourishes on this planet, we have so much to learn from this chubby jelly baby bug. Oh, he's just the cutest. Yes, he is. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to Salt Pepper Wisdom. Leave us a like and comment below whether you think tardigrades are adorable or creepy. Although, how could anyone hate that face? We hope you liked today's episode. If you liked what you saw and want to see more videos like it, we'd be honored if you subscribed to our channel. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us to continue creating quality content for you. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join our community today. Thank you for your support, and we hope you'll stay tuned for our next adventure. Goodbye for now, and love to all the Earthlings. Spread kindness, spread wisdom, and be safe.